I'm Rustic Bison. I'm real Rustic Bison when it comes to Gmail. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, <coughs> let's start in a minute here because it's 1059. Okay, I'm, I'm coming from Switzerland, so I'm really used to strict time schedules. So it's, a, it's 11 now, so I'll get started. <laughs> Other, otherwise, everybody gets really annoyed. Thank you. Yeah. Otherwise, I look 30 seconds later, I'm also annoyed. Uh, so my name is Justin. Uh, today, I want to give just a brief introduction to the XWallet project. So today, uh, I'll give you a little bit of background about the project. Uh, and some context, uh, the current status of the project, some lessons learned, and where we might be headed in the near future. It's a lot to pack into 20 minutes, but uh, we'll see if we can get it done. So, you know, what is the X Wallet? The X Wallet is an opinionated uh, native iOS interface for Monero. So, that's the definition that I would like to give you guys, but I need to give a different definition to people outside this room. So if a, if a person on the street asked me what the X wallet is, it's still a little complicated, but it's something that I think they can understand. The X wallet is a free and open source uh, banking application, banking application. So the idea is that be your own bank. Um, that's what this is supposed to help normal people do. And the benefit that it provides, so you know, why would people ever want to use this thing? Um, it's because it delivers the benefits of private Swiss banking to anyone with an iPhone. So, <clears throat> you know, it used to be the case, uh, maybe it's even the case today, that um, wealthy people can afford some measure of financial privacy, but now these new technologies we have, like Monero and Zcash, they allow us to democratize financial privacy uh, to anybody that has a, a mobile phone or a laptop. So a little bit of background on the project. Um, I'm a fan of Bitcoin. Uh, I've been really interested in it for years now. And uh, I've also known that we have to make some engineering trade-offs in Bitcoin. And one of those uh, kind of unfortunate things is privacy. So uh, for years, I looked for a different technology that could kind of backstop this, right? So I need something that is interoperable with Bitcoin, uh, that's still easy to use, that's still kind of has sound money principles. Uh, but a lot of things came and went and none delivered on the promise uh, until Zcash. So I found Zcash in 2016 and uh, it's really cool, it works. And uh, the only problem is that the memory requirements were too high for, um, you know, for consumer projects, consumer oriented projects. Um, and then uh, I discovered Monero last year and uh, this one was ready to be used. So um, I could deploy a project on this one right now. And so that's what I did. And so that's why, why the X wallet is running on Monero at the moment. Um, but the, the vision of this thing is that you'll be able to swap seamlessly between um, whatever is in your X wallet uh, and, uh, and you know, Bitcoin, for example. So you could do cross-chain atomic swaps, um, use open dimes, things like that where uh, you can move between these technologies seamlessly and privately. So I've had this problem statement in my mind for some time now. And, uh, you know, the question or, or the business problem is how can we give more people access to sound digital money? So in my mind, that is Bitcoin. It might be something else for other people. But I see this as a life raft is more and more places um, get rid of cash and they go to all digital systems. So normal people need, uh, th they need a way to access sound digital money. So that's what I want to build. So my answer is to present banking software, right? So what I want to do is I want to build a solution that competes directly with uh, banking applications. <clears throat> so the average consumer is used to downloading a mobile app for their bank. 
Uh, I think that's a pretty comfortable experience now for most people. And uh, so my, my answer is to position this free and open source bank of the future as a direct competitor to, um, you know, like JP Morgan's offering or UBS or Credit Suisse or something like this. And that's what the X wallet is. It's a free and open source bank of the future. So we need a compelling reason to convince consumers to use our bank, uh, or rather to be their own bank. And, uh, and I think that compelling reason comes through product design excellence and business concept innovation. So we can always provide one financial product that no bank uh, ever can or probably will, and that's cryptocurrency. So, you know, what do we do? We provide direct access to sound money uh, instead of debt, and we don't compromise usability, security, or privacy in any way. So the idea is that you have these three key aspects or these three, three key characteristics, and we don't want to ever reduce privacy in order to enhance usability, right? We want to always improve these, so we just grow the pie rather than slice it up. So when I started the project, uh, I established some product requirements, and what I want to do is I want to delight the user. So I want to do that without compromising any of the underlying values, right? Privacy and security and, and usability. And I think it's important to have an enjoyable experience when you're working with your money because your money is a product of, of your time and your effort. So I don't think that it should be difficult or burdensome to use. And again, we want to deliver exceptional design and performance. So it should always just work. Uh, we really inherit sort of uh, an Apple ethos there. And another important point is that our focus is on mobile banking, uh, not on point of sale transactions. So I think a lot of people tend to imagine that mobile wallets should always be a point of sale retail solution, you know, high speed payments, something like this. But that's not what the X wallet is. The X wallet really is uh, a competitor to your existing banking uh, softwares. Now, when we started development, I, I split the requirements out into two categories, um, programming and then the user interface. On the programming side, we take the Unix philosophy. So we want to build things in a modular way. Uh, we want to write clean code and uh, code that's easy to read. And uh, that means that it's easy to maintain and it's much easier to find bugs. You know, when you're following these good programming principles from the beginning, uh, life is a lot easier. We also want to take a transparent approach. So uh, we're MIT licensed open source from the very beginning. And that's important because, you know, we build on the backs of other people that have open source their work, and so we want to make sure that other people can build off of our work, and that's how we can all move forward uh, together. And it's also important for establishing trust. So I wouldn't expect anyone to even begin to trust the product unless they can evaluate the code for themselves. Now, for user interface, we take a minimalist philosophy. So we want to focus on solving the problem, and then we want to remove anything that is absolutely unnecessary. So we try to minimize or eliminate text and replace that with symbols and, uh, and things like that. And so these other key elements come into play, simplicity, elegance, and precision. That all leads into things like accessibility, right? So we want to make sure that the, the product is, is uh, easy to use by as many people as possible. So <clears throat> how did we execute the project? Uh, I decided to play on hard mode and uh, not use any money. So uh, it just came from personal savings. And um, you know, originally I thought this would take about six weeks. So it started as a personal project. Uh, it was just gonna be a GUI for Monero. How hard could that be? There are already GUIs for Monero. I'm just doing it in Swift. Um, but the reality is that there's a lot that goes into this, and it ended up taking about six months. So how's it currently going? Uh, I think 
We have a pretty good amount of users already. Um, they're pretty quiet, which is really nice. I think that means we've done something right. Uh, we ship new versions about monthly now. Um, what you don't really see here is that we don't really get too many issues and, and bug reports, actually. Um, and that's, that's really good. We have had a few, but ultimately we're able to, to resolve them in short order, and none have been critical. So that's really important. So, I mean, in my opinion, we delivered on all the requirements, and I would definitely call the project a success. Uh, there are still some questions out there, you know, will people continue to find the underlying technology useful? Um, I, I don't know, you know, a lot of this is still experimental. So what do we learn from this project so far? Um, when we started, we, we almost started off creating an alternative implementation uh, in Swift of, of Monero libraries. And uh, fortunately, we failed early at that. Um, it's fortunate that we failed early because if we had not, then it would be a nightmare to maintain these things. So Monero hard forks all the time, and it's really hard to keep up with, especially with a really small team. And uh, yeah, it just would not be feasible. There's a lot of crypto that goes into it. There's a lot of um, opportunities for mistakes, and we really don't wanna make any mistakes especially when it comes to people's money. Um, another thing is that we, well, sorry, so how did we actually solve this problem? We ended up simply uh, using the existing libraries and we put them into archive files and, uh, and, and then we just access those from within our Swift program. So now it's quite straightforward whenever the, the protocol forks, uh, we simply recompile the, the library archives and then we, we push a new version of the X wallet to the App Store. So it's not too difficult. There's still some work that goes into it, but it's not too bad. Um, another issue is with workflow. So, you know, when you build for Apple, uh, the, the work that you're doing locally uh, is on one type of processor, and you build for that one type of processor. And then for the actual hardware device, that's a separate type of processor. So we had to streamline our workflow there. So the, uh, the kind of real sticking point was the Apple review process and guidelines are a little tricky. So, you know, Apple is the hand that feeds you, but um, it, it's also uh, difficult to deal with them in some cases. So originally when we submitted the, the first binaries to the App Store, uh, Apple blocked us and they blocked us for some weeks. So the reasons that they gave, I think were um, pretty silly and uh, they were definitely not in line with their guidelines. And uh, you know, the, the other issue is that um, these guidelines change uh, rather frequently. So it's really difficult to anticipate um, what Apple is going to do in the near future. So you really have to build in a defensive way and, uh, and then try to anticipate how they might move. Uh, <clears throat> ultimately, after calling and emailing them each day, they finally let me into the app store, um, and that's okay, and, and we've been in there ever since, but uh, that, that was a, a challenge for sure. And one of the problems with uh, these guidelines that Apple has is it makes monetization of the app difficult. So one key question for you know, a free open source software application like this is how do you make this project self-sustaining financially? How do you get it to scale, you know, so that you can bring in more money? Um, I think asking for donations is not really an effective model um, in, in this case. So I think you need to have some way of, of financing yourself. And uh, because of the, the guidelines that Apple has, that becomes really difficult. And then we also have internal guidelines, like, like ethical rules that we follow. So, I mean, because it's a privacy-oriented app, you obviously could not expect people to, to download or pay for the app um, with a credit card, because that's all Apple accepts is credit card payments. So that would be um, not cool. So what's next? Um, this is a wish list, it's not a roadmap. 
But, uh, you know, I would really like to do cross-chain atomic swaps, but that's really, really hard to do in Monero. And uh, so far, I've not found uh, a good way to implement those. So I've kind of set that off to the side for the moment. And I'd like to do U2F support, so I think this is an easy way to improve usability and security at the same time. Uh, YubiKey released an SDK for iOS recently, so that's uh, definitely a possibility. I think that that could be an easy win. Um, of course, there's always room for improvement with the user interface that we have. And uh, we came up with this idea for, uh, for gamifying donations. And so what we decided we would try to do is we will let users sort of vote on a feature that they would like to see implemented. So people ask all the time, hey, would you add this feature or that feature? Um, and so what, what we thought is we could add these to the web page, just three of them or so, that we decide we want to implement. And then people can use their app to send cryptocurrency to the feature that they want to see implemented. And then, uh, and then that's how we would finance the development of that feature, the integration of that new feature. And then, of course, the, the features that don't get included in that round, uh, the money that goes there would be dedicated to you know, still getting that first feature done. Um, if there's anything left over, it could go into conference expenses or something like this. Um, and then I heard a rumor that, uh, that Zcash is actually uh, able to reduce the, the memory requirements now significantly. So that means that uh, there's, a, there's an opportunity there for a Zcash project, it seems like. So I want to thank uh, the, the core team for, uh, for, for helping. Um, the, the programmer, the guy behind all the code is Jurgen, and uh, RISV is responsible for the original design, and we're all based in Zurich. And then I uh, also want to thank Dan for his, uh, his support in helping us uh, compile these libraries late at night and over long weekends. And uh, there were a few people that uh, came by on the internet that helped us out, pointed out a few bugs early on, and uh, looked at our code. So we're definitely thankful for, for those people's support as well. So thank you guys. I'll be running a uh, workshop or two workshops this afternoon. So if you have any questions there, uh, we can go deeper into it. We'll also have a look at uh, how you might be able to, to properly evaluate a smartphone cryptocurrency wallet. So thank you. So next up.